Z Zach, do you even know where the hell we are anymore? I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure the I'm pretty sure the fucking enemy stand user get brought brought Jarrett here somewhere. It's fucking Shadow Realm is so goddamn dark. What? Why, why is it wet here? I don't know. Oh god, it's on my shoe. We, we, we gotta record the podcast soon. Like, he better be here because I don't know if we have enough time to go back. Wait, what's that noise? Oh, oh god, Jared! Oh god. Da down, boy! Down! Get out! Jared, Jared, ah, ah, listen. Ah, We're friends. Why, why do you have a newspaper? Oh, jeez. What, what day is it? Wait, uh, how did I get here? Oh. Last thing I remember is just that all I remember is a very angry Italian man telling me to wash my hands. Yeah, no, you've been missing for like a month. What? Yeah. Oh my. I don't know, it might have been a couple days. We kind of got lost. Oh, you too. Yeah. Uh, well, uh... What have you been podcast? eating down here? I don't know. It's been very dark down here. I've been keeping track of things in this journal, though. Okay, um... Well, hey, uh, we got a podcast to record. Are you, are you oh, nice. sane enough to do that? Oh, yeah, no, I think it'd probably be fine. Once the scratching stops, or the itching. Alright, um... I'm gonna set up here. You just, uh... Try not to eat anybody. You didn't happen to bring any water, did you? It's quite dry here. Alright, all right, Jared, come on. Come over here. We're you know, starting. Zach. You know, you know, Zach, you make a very good sandwich. It's very good. Secret ingredient. <laughs> Vanilla extra. Oh. Mm. I think I just hit the pocket. Oh. oh. Mm. Alright, anyways. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Variety's A Slice of Life. As always, I am Anthony and joining me today is Zach. Hello. And the feral Jarrett. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, salutations, Internet. We are a bi-monthly podcast, and if this is your first time joining us, we post on... Oh, oh, come on. We post on the 1st to 15th of every month, always talking about a specific anime or a broad subject. Today, we will be talking about overpowered characters in anime. Brought to you from the Shadow Realm. Yes. <sighs> so. Alright. Yeah, so, um... Where should we start with this? Because kind of a broad-ish subject, because... I mean, a lot of characters can be quite powerful, but well, uh, but overpowered. I think we need defining at least for us what that is. I, I feel like there's a couple categories for it. Like there's mm -hmm. in universe, there are obviously the strongest. Like you, mm -hmm. you know, good examples are like All Might and One Punch Man, where it's like everyone's like, oh my god, they're insane. Mm -hmm. And then you have characters like most main characters from Shonen Jump stuff, where it's like they're really overpowered. But they never like easily win the fight, or you know, mm -hmm. like they always they're always at their match, even though they're insanely overpowered. Yeah, I think there's also the ones where like they have to grow into it, like um, like Avatar. I think is a good one where they have to grow into it. Like yes, Ang is an Avatar. He's already supposed to be strong, but as we see throughout the show, he he's not like that. He he has to grow into actually being. An avatar, and even after all that happens in Avatar, we see that he grows and continues to be, you know, stronger. But he doesn't just start off just inherently. I'm the Avatar, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike Korra. Unlike Korra, <laughs> literally, who literally does that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's it's a nice um, it's a nice trope that I like when it's like there's. And I mean, one of my favorite tropes is like the old man overpowered character. Ah, yes. Like, Bleach probably has my favorite version of that, where it's just this fucking ripped ass old guy who like never fights, but when he does, he just instantly wins. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Um. And then uh, we we already decided that for this isekai, it's 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 it's, it's own category. Yeah. It, needs to be <laughs> we'll explain why later but it's uh yeah uh, mm -hmm. um so yeah we let's uh i guess get into some of the really good representations of an insanely overpowered character mm -hmm. in anime um 
I guess we should start out with the good JoJo ones because we just came off of the back of our JoJo arc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so for like God's sakes, Jorno in the last half or last part of a uh, uh, part five, he becomes unstoppable in every way, shape, and form. Mm. <sighs> like, I'm glad Araki ended it there because there would be no way to have rivalry after that point. Like he made somebody somebody so powerful that they can't be stopped, and I think he acknowledges that too, which is nice. It's kind of weird because, like, Giorno's power really isn't that inherently strong, but he just, he is the strongest character. Like, any fight he is, he's in, he's usually get breezes through it. Yeah. Like, I still feel like he would have found some kind of way to beat King Crimson if, even if he didn't get the Requiem Arrow. I feel like that was just, like, a guaranteed uh, victory at that point, but... Um... But yeah, it's like, I mean, most of the JoJo's are fairly overpowered. I think Josuke might not necessarily be. Because they just kind of get lucky and defeat their villain. But like, Jotaro and fucking pretty much every JoJo from that point on are just insanely overpowered. Oh, you know. I mean, it, yeah, in part seven, like, I'm not going to go with too much into it, but they essentially pull what part five did, but like, they just kind of pull something out, something out of nowhere, and then he has the most powerful stand in the entire series. Yeah, it's it's not necessarily like a bad representation of it, but it's definitely a unique one because it's it's not destroying the story; it's just ending it. And I can appreciate that because Araki always like changes story when he gives his characters essentially the god gun. Yeah. Even going back to like part one of Jojo, Jonathan was still very strong. Granted, he did kind of grow into that, but by the end, he was still extremely powerful. Yeah. Compared to what was known at the time of just like mortal men, even vampires, man was pretty strong. Oh yeah, just a big beefer of a man who did oh, yeah. light breathing. Mm-hmm. When it comes to like JoJo, like the ca- the main characters are usually so strong that they have to like arbitrarily find ways to have other characters fight. Where like like they'll split up and then the side characters will have like a death, the close to death battle. Yeah. One of my favorite just overpowered characters in JoJo's Ultimate Cars, just because I love. I love it because they try a bunch of things to try to beat him, nothing works, and then just dumb luck beats him. And that's such a, like, a fucking Jonathan uh, way of, oh, yeah. yeah, Joseph way of beating him. Yeah, it's, it's great. But yeah, I, I love it because, like, it, it's not like they, he, be, he, he said that he's invincible, and they weren't kidding. Like, I'm glad they just didn't, like, pull some, like, random thing where it's like, Haha, I was able to kill you even though you were unkillable. No, he literally just launches him in space and he yeah. can't do anything about it. Yeah, they keep it consistent, which I really appreciate because a lot of stuff like that, they're like, oh no, there's just some minor thing they didn't overlook. And... Yeah, a, a random Achilles heel or something like that. It's like, yeah, I thought the lava was going to get him, honestly, but then it's like when he came out of the lava, I was like, oh no, he's going to have to beat him a different way. Like. I thought that was it. I thought he fucking won because that was like supposed to be his ace in the hole, and it fucking failed. Yeah. So it's. I love that, and I love the creative ways some characters have to get to defeat overpowered characters. But I also hate the really lazy way writers represent that sometimes. Yeah, as just a MacGuffin. Yeah. Or in the in the terms of other characters, just a hidden ability that. Is just now being tapped because of stress I guess this, this isn't even my final form like I, uh. I I really appreciate like when Azula almost killed Aang and ended the avatar state when he was mm-hmm. in the avatar mode she just ended up hitting him at the perfect spot like yeah. that was a beautiful way of taking down an overpowered character because it's an already established ability a very mm-hmm. smart character in a very stressful circumstances yeah so it was just like perfectly planned and I, f- I love that scene so much even though it like hurts me inside to watch because that's a really emotional scene for that show but uh 
it is. That show has a lot of moments like that, but yeah, that one is a that one's a pretty strong one. Yeah. Um. Another uh, really good modern representation of it, which is slightly different from what we've been talking about, is like All Might. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, because All Might is literally the definition of overpowered hero. Oh yeah, in a world full of people with incredible, legitimate superpowers. And he is literally the top of the hero rankings. Yeah. Which... By like a very large margin. It's 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 really cool too because it's like he's you know he has his weaknesses and stuff, but it's when he's fighting, he's essentially invincible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he yeah. Was. Well, what I, what what I like about All Might is just like the fact that he's more of a he's, like he's more of a symbol that like he's the driving force for so many characters because of like because of what he represents rather than what he actually is. Oh yeah, like Endeavors, completely driven by him. Deku, fucking Bakugo in a way. A lot of people are. Most of Class One A. Which I think that. I think that speaks to something with... Uh, I know that we're talking about overpoweredness, but I think that that, for All Might, is honestly, like, one of his most powerful things is the fact that he is a symbol in the show, and he is a... Like Zach was saying, he is a driving force for so many people, and I think that goes kind of beyond just what his actual, like, physical overpoweredness is and just kind of solidifies that with the fact that he has this um this innate power just to drive and motivate people and and yeah that's really reflected in him because i mean his master i think even says at some point that like nobody knew who his master was and i don't even think deku knew who he who she was so it's like just because you're super powerful does not mean that you're going to be oh yeah well known or a symbol of peace but all might was that he was what the world needed at that point Mm-hmm. Like I also just love like like when you think about it like like in a world of like in a world of superheroes who is their Superman? Yeah, and then that's what he is. He's he re- like he yeah he's the ultimate hero, the best of the best. People want to be like him. Just him existing. Like that's my favorite thing about like the villains is that the villains want to beat him specifically because of because if they kill him then it represents a fall of heroes yeah i love that just wherever he is crime is not because they're just so scared of him yeah Yeah. like yeah like crime rights like like crime rates are low because all might exist and the world starts like they say is like what 80 percent heroes like 80 percent of the world just has powers yeah, and like, like I think it's yeah, I think it's like eighty percent at the start of the show they say that. So that means like, for the majority of the population, that man is still unbelievably powerful compared to everyone else. Not to even mention the fact that the other twenty percent that doesn't have powers, mm-hmm. just like that one person is so powerful that it is. And insane. I mean, like, we've never technically seen All Might in his prime. Like when, like if he went full force, one single punch in his prime, he probably could have cracked the earth or started an earthquake or some shit. I know. The closest we get to that is, is uh, the movie, but even then, he it's it's a very brief thing, and it's not a vil not like a major villain situation like that. It's just stopping two guys from robbing a casino. Yeah, I think. And, yeah, and, and I mean, even then, like we see the uh, the power decline scales in the background in that one scene. And he's significantly lower than he used to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think with, I think we may be able to pull up that picture because I think they have like what it used to be, and then I think you see the spike go down. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a fucking sharp like, decline. He, yeah, which means like his power was so incredibly high, and the fact that he was still able to do what he could with the limited power that we see in the show, like fighting the uh, the Nomu. Yeah. and all the other things and then like the United States of Smash that is insane the fact that he's still able to do that at like like what maybe like a quarter like oh yeah he says it, it like would have very, taken him like three punches but this one took him 300 it's like oh yeah. my god 
And yeah. also another thing I like is like, you know, he's the number one hero, and then like Endeavor is also super strong. But like, what makes him the second hero is because he is because he can't he can't live up to the ideals that All Might sets. Like, yeah. I, I like I'm gonna go in a little bit like manga territory into this. I, this might be shown in the fourth season. It's not too spoily. There's a part where Endeavor talks to All Might and he just asks him, "It's like, how do I be like you?" God, that's Cause, like because even Endeavor like realizes like All Might represents this ideal that's almost impossible to match. Yeah, I mean, even when he is the number one hero. People keep calling him the number two hero on accident just because they don't think of him as that. They're like, no, even though All Might's not number one hero anymore, he still is. Because like it's insane that like the what the gap that it felt like between those two, between just one and two, theoretically there shouldn't be too big of a difference. Like in normal things, like the difference between like one and two can be very minuscule. But with this, it felt like it's like a canyon between them. Like, the spot between 1 and 2 for them, like, throughout the show, it just feels almost, like, insurmountable, just the distance between them. Even though Endeavor is, though he is a terrible person, I will never let that go, yeah. he's a great hero. Yeah, he has, like, the like, most like, solved cases out of any other hero in existence. Exactly, like, like, stopping crime and helping people, he's good at, even though he's an awful person. But still, when you put that against All Might who's only a spot above him it's like it's astonishing the 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 difference that you can somehow feel innately even though we don't see like numbers or anything in the show it's just like innately you can feel that there is just a very large gap between these two people who are incredibly strong and incredibly good at what they do it's like endeavor might have saved more people but all might represents the savior for people exactly mm -hmm. Also, one thing I have to mention with All Might that I thank so much that the, the the author is so good that he did not do this. A problem with a, like a lot of overpowered characters is that they get wharf effect, and yeah. they never did that with All Might. Like no. All Might went down. Like like All Might, yeah, he, he like in the end he kind of like lost everything, but he didn't just he didn't go down like a like a wimp. He went down fighting, and he won. Yeah, and I mean, even the situations where All Might gets incapacitated, like in the movie, when they have him tied up, it's he can't move or else other people will get hurt. It's not that he physically can't do it, it's just that yeah. he can't because other people will be hurt in that effect. Mm -hmm. Like, I appreciate that, because I'd be kind of pissed if they put restraints on him. He's like, oh, you can't break out of those. It's like, really? Yeah. This, this, this man that we've seen change weather with his fist can't break out of these little ropes. Mm. Um... Also, th there's a couple things that like I love about the My Hero universe is that just because All Might is insanely strong like that, it doesn't mean that he's invincible. Like, Aizawa would be able to stop him almost instantly. Well, theoretically, I guess. Theoretically, yeah. And then, like, yeah. And then, um, what is it, like, Sir Night Eye was able to, like, learn the truth about him using his powers. Mm. It's like obviously like characters could theoretically like counter All Might in a way depending on and it, and that doesn't make them overpowered either and that's what I love about it it's, it's not just like a pissing contest of who has the fucking stronger power it's no it's like the fucking Pokemon thing where it's like this beats this because of this reason yeah so I I appreciate that a lot um. Yeah, they, they, they did right by All Might and how oh, yeah. they set him up and how they continue to still use him. Like, mm -hmm. his story just, it, it works for what we need. They, uh, very well done. They, they took him out insanely early in the show, in my opinion. Just like, he's he was only All Might for like, what, two, three seasons? Or, I guess, the symbol of peace, but now he's just, you know, small. Yes and uh, no, I mean, but to be I, fair... The show isn't about All Might as much as we love and adore All Might. It's not yeah. about All Might. It's about Deku and, and his journey and everyone else's. But uh, like, I, I feel I feel like All Might stayed as long as he needed to, and I love mm -hmm. that. Like, the world's most dangerous hero was beaten by him instead of just like a bunch of high schoolers at this moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, because I kind of would have been like, mad if he was beaten by Deku and the, the gang that early, because they don't feel like they're ready for that. No. But, like, I also, like, I, I, I like, I like his place in the story of kind of being, like, a father figure for Deku and stuff, and I just, like, I like the idea of, like, All Might kind of represents what Deku could be. Mm -hmm. It's like, Deku obviously has his power, so he has the uh, he has the ability to some point get even more powerful than he was. Yeah. yeah. I really hope that we do see a natural transition to Deku becoming the new All Might. Because, I mean, he does say this is a story about him becoming the number one hero. So, I hope that it's just not like, oh yeah, it's a cut, now he's like the most popular. It's like, no, I hope he earns that shit and he goes through the fucking hardships and having to save people and all that other stuff. But um, what you're saying is that uh, Deku can look at All Might to what he could be. I also saw then the other way where if you look at All Might as how he is now, he's... Granted, he did give his power to Deku, but he is very different from what he was in that it's almost a, almost a negative kind of future. If, like, Deku was to go down... A similar path or the reckless way that he was using his power before yeah I think it's a good it's not as like direct but it's a, still a good lesson to like this could also be you like yeah you can be a number one hero but if you keep pushing yourself too much and try to live up to be that symbol that you and all my was then you could end up in the same way with with the world that now needs another symbol of hope but that could also be a good thing. Mm -hmm. I do want to see a lot of the American heroes because I imagine they have some pretty cool, like, like Cow Lady. Yeah. Or Black Lightning, I think was his name. Uh, it's like, yeah. Uh, we should save more of our My Hero talk for yes, the next episode sure. where we actually talk about My Hero. Let's yeah, let's. Uh, shall we move on to our our other? really good ultra powerful punchy boy saitama <laughs> absolutely we should yeah uh, caked baldy <laughs> my favorite representation of just a like a comedic all might essentially because mm -hmm. it's just he's he literally one punch man he i think there's like a handful of fights in the entire series where he doesn't throw more than one punch mm -hmm. and i love that because it's just I hope they never explain it either, because I love the fact that he's just mysteriously, insanely powered. Yeah, but like, yeah, like I, I would actually be upset with the story if it was revealed that Saitama somehow got his powers in like another way. Like, I just love the explanation that he, he just did a lot of, he just worked out, like yeah. really hard. <laughs> and somehow he can match, like he's even better than these people who are born with these like natural powers and even other people that have trained really hard oh yeah like the kung fu master and all that shit he's just like yeah no he's just he did push ups and sit ups and ran 10 kilometers every day and no AC <laughs> that's my favorite he just has no AC for like no reason it's like, no. it was like what no AC no heat it was just like mm. yeah no AC no heat and then it was like a balanced diet <laughs> and then just like the workout Oh man. Um, but yeah, I just I like because his fights are always such insane setups to like, oh my god, you know, under normal circumstances this would be insane. And he just, boop, all right, you're dead. Yeah, like like I at the like like I almost re like I still kind of like regret when we talk about side characters never mentioning anything about One Punch Man because One Punch Man is built around its side characters because the main character is so powerful that like all of the drama arises all the drama comes from how other characters have to deal with the situation and then ends with Saitama solving it. Oh, that's my favorite. They're like all panicked. Like, how are we going to win this? And Saitama just comes in. It's like, oh, hold on, I got oh. this. Oi. Oh, so he just turns that one, uh, the fucking beetle monster to just cooking because <laughs> he's just like, you know, fuck that. <laughs> And like any like any character like any of the characters that just see him like like he's so like like he's so powerful but then like no one really knows him 
In fact, that's even in the opening. I was about to say, isn't that in the opening? <laughs> yeah, nobody knows who he is. But, like, uh, you know, like, anybody who actually sees him tends to just, like, be obsessed with him. Like, Moomin Rider and the one Kung Fu guy from Season 2. Like, they just become his, like, biggest fan at that point. I love Moomin Rider. Oh, yeah, Moomin Rider is the best, <laughs> the best anime character of all time. Oh. Um... Yeah, but it, I, I love this story of One Punch Man. I haven't read any of the manga, and I haven't seen anything in Season 2 yet, just because I'm waiting for it to finish. Or has it finished yet? Yeah, it finished like okay. a while ago. I'll probably will watch it then. Um, I'm kind of behind on actual anime I want to watch, but it's besides the point. Um, I just hope that they eventually change up the story a bit more from how it is, because, I mean, you can only do so much with the story of, hey, he hits everybody one time. Like after a while, you I kind see, of run into an end, like a yeah. brick wall. Yeah, I, I think that's where like his his character kind of helps, because Saitama does not act like the overpowered character that he is. If that makes sense, like he doesn't act like an all might. He's not like standing to be a symbol of something. Mm-hmm. He's not arrogant, even though he. I'm fairly sure that he's aware of how strong he is. Oh no, he absolutely is. Like, oh, no, it, yeah. yeah, but he's not he's not arrogant about it. He's not like how should I phrase this? He's not like super heroic. Like, he's not like out every day patrolling trying to stop crime. He's still also trying to live a normal ish life. Yeah, I love how trouble just kinda of finds him. Yeah. Yeah, it's never really him looking for a fight. It's always like a fight ends up around him and then he just kinda puts an end to it. Mm. And like, yeah, Saitama's Saitama's a great character because like he, like yeah, like like you said, he's not arrogant. Even though he is like the most powerful person ever, he he cares more about like kind of going back to like the All Might thing a little bit, just like how heroes represent things. Where he like he gives his own credit away to other people when they deserve it like when he beats the fish man he like everybody's like he it's like surely he didn't do that and he's like no you're right i didn't do that it was like they weakened him and i just got the last punch it was lucky <laughs> so yeah, then every, yeah so like everybody hates him at that point and then uh this was in the manga i don't think they put this in the yeah they didn't put this in the second season might have been an ova or something but there's a a small bit where like there's some like villain attacking the police station or whatever and Saitama beats them and he dresses up like a police officer to make it seem like the police did it <laughs> and that the police are heroes that's another good uh, version of like he's a symbol for hope he's a symbol of hope in a different way where it's not him yeah. but he's making sure that the light's being shined on the appropriate places yeah he's more like he's kind of like the opposite ish of of All Might, where he's not like think of it like a graph. All Might would be a point. He he's like a spike on the graph. Mm-hmm. Where it's like that is like the hero kind of thing. Saitama so is more trying to keep everything level, but also still raising it up, if that makes sense. Like yeah, so, Saitama is like ultra powerful, but he doesn't want he doesn't want like people to think less of other people because of how powerful he is. Yeah. Like he wants he wants he wants like people to he wants people to just believe in heroes and not just him himself yeah. versus all might wants everyone to believe in him and other heroes not the other like mm-hmm. yeah I really i guess i never really truly thought about it that way of how fucking selfless uh, saitama really is mm-hmm. in like a weird way yeah. it's yeah, a never... subtleish way but it but it's there I, I never really thought about that until just now that yeah, Saitama and All Might essentially represent opposite things of like how they go about yeah. their like job. Like it's still similar, but it is opposed not opposed, but it is it is different. Two know? sides of the same coin, more or less. Yeah. It's like they both want to make heroes good. It's just like one has done it by making himself like the focal point of a lot of other things and Saitama's trying to not be the focal point and keep it on everyone else. 
like he want like the the like the thing is like all my uh not all my uh saitama wants to be like famous he wants people to recognize him but then like when he has those moments where he could take the credit he doesn't yeah yeah because it, it, it needs to be in the other people's like they need to be in the spotlight more than he does right now yeah like because like when you think about like the fight with the fish man like Moomin Riders fight against him even though he lost like so badly it represented so much more than what Saitama contributed oh, like yeah. even if Saitama one punched him Moomin's Rider sh- Moomin Rider's struggle meant so much more to both the viewers and to both the audience of the actual anime and the people watching the fight in the universe <laughs> so if Saitama is just like yeah I'm so powerful I can one hit this guy then Moomin Rider's struggle meant nothing yeah and that would have just kind of yeah would have given people security being like yeah no we're safe but you know it, it doesn't give them any hope versus Moo Man Rider being like oh yeah no he did all this fucking cool shit and was like yeah we can do that cause he's just a regular guy like me mm-hmm. versus the god that is Saitama uh, are there any other really good representations of overpowered characters other than I guess those two ish because I'm having a hard time truly yeah. thinking of a really good version of it. Yeah, same. Like it, it's such it's such a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. That's very rarely did good. Like because when you make a good like to make a good one, you have to either like you can't have. You usually can't have your main character be the overpowered character. Your character, your overpowered character, either has to be a side character that represents something like All Might, or your main character is overpowered but like i feel like having the overpowered the overpowered person can work as a villain if they're a good foil for the main hero say yeah it's kind of specific to circumstances like i mean i like cars as an overpowered villain a lot but i mean the pillarmen already were super strong yeah I, I feel like that's just as a slippery slope though because like if oh, it's yeah. an over if it's an overpowered villain then i don't think they can just be like haha i'm going around destroying things like most dragon ball villains <laughs> i i feel like it needs to be like i feel like it needs to be like the over the usually the villain has to have some sort of hubris like they're like yeah i can flip i can just flip my fingers and kill you but i won't because i want you to get powerful enough to beat me like I want you to give me a fight. That that's my favorite overpowered villains is the ones where it's like, where they spare the hero because like they're like you're not ready. It's like I want you to give me an actual challenge. I've I've seen that before. But I can't actually remember any of those. Yeah, like I feel like that's such a big trope, but I can't think of a specific <laughs> example. Is it funny that Goku's done that before? <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, he did that to Cell. It was a really bad moment. <laughs> um. Yeah, like him and Vegeta both just do that to sell. It's like, what? <laughs> oh fuck! Um, that's not oh, really God, Goku. God, Goku's so dumb. We'll get to him in a little bit. Um, oh god. One of my favorite, like, I guess, background characters that's been known to be like overpowered is from Bleach. Even though he's not the best representation of it, I still love him just because of the fucking hype surrounding his fights. Where he fights so, like, he purposely handicaps himself so that way his fights will be cooler. But then, like, when he just slowly starts removing the handicaps, he just fucking wipes the floor with whoever he's fighting. (laughs) Although, there have been, like, two fights where I was like, no, that's bullshit, he should have won way sooner, or something along those lines. Like, they still didn't handle it correctly, and that's what made me sad. Um... So yeah, let's transition into some bad representations of um, overpowered characters where it's I'll go, they I'll shouldn't go get the be cart. this way. <laughs> I'll go get the long scroll. Yeah, this is it's gonna be a long one. This and the next next little segment are gonna be the vast majority of this fucking podcast. <laughs> I brought the tome, sir. <laughs> so where to begin? So, so power or power creep is a very big uh, b- catalyst for this type of uh, trope. Mm-hmm. 
And, I mean, you can look at any fucking shonen manga. You can look at anything that's been running for more than, like, ten years, I would say. That isn't yeah. JoJo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to talk about Power Creep, we might as well get into it. Dra- Dragon Ball, just... Yeah. Everything... Well, specifically Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball was not bad with the Power Creep. Dragon Ball Z, when you start getting aliens and superpowers basically involved, man, does it just spike up in uh, exponentially every single time? And I to to explain it the best way, I think I think we are not sponsored by them anyway. But Team Four Star and their DBZ bridge, I think, put it the best when it comes to like pretty much everyone in that show. Oh, you didn't manage to kill me. I am now stronger. <laughs> and even if you did kill me, and if I come back through MacGuffin, Dragon Balls, it doesn't, I'm going to uh, be even more powerful. Doesn't Goku come back from the dead at some point? He comes back from the dead like a twice. couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he dies in the first season. Oh my. Of Dragon he, Ball. He dies. He and then the rest the of the season. the first arc. <laughs> yeah, like halfway through the... Not even halfway through, I think, like, in the first quarter of the season, he dies. And the rest of it is him, like, like up until, like, uh, another quarter of it is him just training in the afterlife until he's brought back. Like, I mean, he literally spends a year dead so that he can train in the afterlife with, Ka- with King Kai to then fight Vegeta and Nappa when they show up in a year's time. I mean, fucking, I know this is a very... <laughs> poor source to get this from but like um uh, the th- fucking oh god death battle mm-hmm. they gave a very good statement about goku where it's like superman is the sort is essentially infinite power but goku is his whole thing is like he rises up to whatever challenge he has to meet yeah. but superman's already surpassed that so it, it's like goku theoretically should never be beaten especially considering their whole afterlife bullshit where he can just come back oh yeah i mean, oh, yeah. I mean yeah also what like the a bullshit power that doesn't make any sense is the saiyan's ability that if they get close to death they get stronger oh are you serious it's like why is that why, yeah it was like why is that a yeah. thing that's they were saying team four star pretty much put it put it accurately at that because it's just yeah Every time you, like, nearly kill a Saiyan, and if they live, they're gonna be stronger. Just, oh boy, whoo, man, it just, mm, the power creep on that show. It gets it just keeps so ramping up. strong, and it's just like, I mean, to put it best, like, we talked about this earlier, Frieza, who is the main villain for the entirety of the second season, kills I think just Krillin, but also helps in a fight with Goku. Basically goes toe-to-toe with Goku until he, like, turns Super Saiyan. And even though he still kind of goes toe-to-toe with him for a while. It's not, like, one of the longest they fights break... in anime history. It's so long. Like, if it's the, if it's, yeah, the unedited one where it's not like Dragon Ball Z Kai, if it's just, like, the normal original, it takes forever. That fight spans <laughs> so many episodes. It, it, it's but, funny because they're, like, the planet's gonna explode in five minutes, and then, like, it takes, like, five ten episodes. episodes. <laughs> yeah, like, 15 episodes later. <laughs> yeah, they literally fought to a point where just their collateral damage was literally destroying the planet. And you know what happens when Frieza ends up not dying and coming back like one or two seasons later at the start of the Cell Saga. You know who beats him then? My when boy. he's like in a powerful, strong, robotish body with his dad as well? Trunks with yeah. a sword. Granted, Trunks from the future, still, mm-hmm. Trunks nowhere near as powerful as Goku. Robots Never even gets close. Or androids in that show really confuse me because they seem so powerful, but at the same time, so not powerful. Ah. <laughs> uh, also, not to mention the fact that, you know, like, at the end of that whole Frieza fight, when I was talking about how Goku is just kind of on an alien planet for a little bit, and then also still putting him in, still putting him in, like, first place for, like, one of the worst anime dads, decides to stay on that planet with a group of aliens who apparently have the ability just to translocate, just kind of, it's the whole him putting his fingers up to his head and just teleporting. He learns that. 
really quickly. He spends like another year on that planet training, quote unquote, and then just like out of the blue, just teleports himself back home. Like they try to bring him back with the Dragon Balls because <laughs> they think he's dead like soon after they get back to Earth. And Shin Rush is like, yeah, no, he's still alive, but he doesn't want to come back. So he says he'll see you later. I don't know. I'm taking my balls back. <laughs> and which is like, I'm sorry. The hell do you mean that he's still alive? Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. The, the representation and power scaling in Dragon Ball is just really kind of a, more like a bad gray area because so many people love Dragon Ball and I get the appeal, but I hate it for the. Well, I don't hate it, but I just I don't like it for the sheer fact is the I don't, power I haven't creep even, is insane. I haven't even watched Super, but I Super. know Oof. how crazy that stuff gets and like even just going off the original like the whole thing with like as we talked about earlier with like just goku telling cell to get stronger oh like you are just horrible you're overpowered and horrible like i don't like goku as a character being overpowered and an idiot just it pains me like and he just gets dumber like there's one thing to have a to want a willing ch uh, a, a challenge if you're the villain not when you're the hero taunting yeah. a villain or like, like if it's heal another, the if villain if he's not fucking yeah. at his fullest it's like fine yeah go, go. here's the sense of being what <laughs> like no. like like if it's a hero to another hero and they're like training okay sure you're a bit of a dick but i get it if you're doing this to a villain which is kind of a rarish thing to have you're the asshole and you deserve everything that you get after that point uh, i wanted to talk about something with dragon ball super and it's like the dumbest thing was uh so like uh, one of the main characters, like one of the important characters in Dragon Ball Super, is Beerus, who's the yes. god of destruction. He's literally the most powerful being in the entire galaxy. The cat. Uh, yeah, the, the, he's like an Egyptian cat. So, like, uh, like essentially, like Goku has to become Super Saiyan God, which is like it involves this ritual with like five other Saiyans or something like that. Sorry, what? Yeah, they they have to do a ritual for it, which. Might, might I also add that, like, they were short one Saiyan, but it worked because Videl was pregnant. Oh? <laughs> like, uh, that's, uh, this somehow worked. Like, I don't know how a fetus transferred wait, his power over to wait, Goku. Wait, who all did they have? It was it was all the Saiyans. It was Trunks, Goten, Gohan, Vegeta, and Videl. That, with... should, that should... Only one of them should actually count. So only one of them is actually a Saiyan. Everyone else is a half, but go on. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's a Saiyan, half Saiyans, and a quarter fetus. <laughs> a quarter Saiyan fetus, but they... Uh, also, so they give how... him... oh, God. No, uh, go on, go on. I'll, I'll, I'll save my point for after that. So, so Goku becomes Super Saiyan God, and it's this really powerful form. It, it kind of lets him stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the God of Destruction. And then... So, and eventually it fades because it doesn't last forever. And then, eventually, Goku comes up with a new technique. It's called Super Saiyan Blue. And he's like, and then it's like, oh, how did you make this form? And it's like, well, you know, I just thought about what Super Saiyan God was like. And then I just matched that. And then I created Super Saiyan Blue. Fuck and you. It's, and it's, he can just do that at will. Like, he can just oh. do it whenever he wants. And it's super vague. It's kind of vague how like strong it is compared to super saiyan god but another bullshit thing is that vegeta developed super saiyan god just because he saw goku do it oh god he doesn't need the ritual he could just do it because he saw goku do it okay back to the ritual also i love how they somehow find out about this ritual even though a vegeta didn't really care about his people and was not like a uh the point I'm looking for. He was not like an intellectual with this stuff. How did they learn about this? Uh, they... That civilization's been dead for so long. <laughs> they, How they did they Shinra. learn? Uh, of course he did. And then like it. Um, also, I that shouldn't work if it's just you know half sayings. Like 
but apparently it doesn't matter. This is almost more upsetting than 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 Goku remembering in Super that he can just do Kaioken, which he hadn't done since literally the first season of Dragon Ball. Okay. Oh yeah, no, that was he never did Kaioken after that. And then all of a sudden, I hear that in Super, he remembered that he can do Kaioken while he's also being a Super Saiyan. I'm like, why? Okay, so oh, yeah. I have a question about the Dragon Ball villain scaling. Uh-huh. So, uh, in My Hero, you know, All Might has, he's fought in lesser villains, like, quite often, where he can easily just disband them. Yeah. And I mean, so does Saitama and all that shit. But to me, in Dragon Ball, they're always fighting a foe that is equal to them. Or, like, they're slightly uh-huh. better or, you know, whatever. Does he ever go backwards to where, like, he fights somebody that's significantly weaker than him and he just disbands them immediately? Oh, no, not really. So, like, even, <laughs> even, like, even when they fight, like, mooks, they still, like, punch them. They, like, you, you, Goku should easily be able to just fucking, like, beam wave insta-kill mooks. But they they still like fast punch moves and then like it takes. It's like I'm 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 having to suspend my disbelief for the sheer fact it's like there's always somebody stronger in this universe apparently, and you're you're reaching yeah. that cap, my dude. Like you can't. Oh no, he they did reach that cap, and you know what their <laughs> solution was? What? Introduce eleven other universes. <laughs> oh god, it's worse than I thought. Yep. Yeah, like they inter- they inter- like they're like okay, we beat you know we beat Boo, who's like this god of this like weird god. We met Beerus, who's the god of destruction. What could happen now? New universe hit the legendary assassin. He punches people so hard that they blow holes in his chest. Oh boy! All right, so Dragon Ball is a lot worse than I thought it was. Oh yeah. Oh no. It's uh, it was already pretty bad but like oh man and that's not even getting into like cell who just like uh or majin Buu. they had a weird absorption thing for a, a while where they just got stronger by eating people yeah so majin like, Buu. this guy weird uh no cells was much worse to be honest was it <laughs> so he like oh, he drank people <laughs> yeah because uh, like, yeah, i only know really this? a little bit about majin Buu. i didn't know anything about that oh you know like cell version one is like gravy's Especially in like Team Four, so are you just like, want to me drink this guy? No, I'd rather. Oh, and you're drinking him. Oh, oh boy. Mm, yeah, and then like, I, like I don't know where Super got like, I I, never, I didn't finish Super, so I don't know if it like escalates even more. But like when Go, when Goku puts Kaioken onto like Super Saiyan Blue or Super Saiyan God, it becomes even more powerful. Even though, like, that's just a power that he never used. Like, why did he never yeah. use Kaioken? So, are they still writing Dragon Ball? Yeah, I, th- yeah, I think so. I, th- I think there's probably going to be more Super. Like, I mean, they had the Brawly movie not too long ago. That's true. And the and the Brawly movie, they had Gogeta God. Like, they had, <laughs> like, right. what, what was it? Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta or whatever? Mm-hmm. Too many fucking names. But then, like,. And then there's also Ultra Instinct, which is like Goku goes so fast that he like uh, manipulates time. I forgot about Ultra Instinct. Well, I, I like the concept in Dragon Ball where they it's like you can get stronger by going a different path where they get the tail. That might be a different. I don't know because I don't know anything about Dragon Ball, but I I, I heard that's like, uh, you know, he heard it's like, oh yeah, you can get stronger by going back, like essentially giving up some powers, getting your tail back, and going that route through powers. That's kind of a cool concept, which I haven't actually seen done before. I know. I'm not really sure what you're referring to. Same. No, it's it's the giant monkey Vegeta, or great yeah. ape Vegeta, whatever the fuck it was. But yeah, I mean uh, that that I mean that's just uh, that's just a thing that Saiyans have, and then yeah, cut that, off that... Vegeta's tail. Oh uh, yeah, no, they 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 basically dropped the giant ape in season one as well, because that was an old Dragon Ball thing. I might have a misunderstanding of this power concept then. And like, uh, not to mention that they have, you know, just to increase the overpoweredness of characters. And the, then they have things like the hyperbolic time chamber. Hey, step in for like a couple of hours. You've been training for like 13 weeks. You've been training for like a year. You've only been there in a day. Just things like that that make no damn sense. Uh, Bleach has something like a, that. Like, mm. 
Uh, the overpoweredness, while yes, it is very high on Goku, man, that world is just overpowered to begin with. And then you have poor guys like Yamcha and Tien, who are still basically stuck in normal Dragon Ball world, and it's just like, why are you guys here? <laughs> I, I love the fact that Yamcha just gives up because he realizes that everybody's too powerful. He just becomes a baseball <laughs> player because he's like, you know what, F this. Same. Oh, like, this know. is stupid, I'm playing baseball. Oh yeah, no, I like how Krillin, like, after he becomes a cop and he stops, like, using his power, he doesn't become bulletproof anymore. Oh yeah, he becomes weaker because he stops <laughs> yeah, he's training. Like, he's like, I'm a cop now and I'm, like, I've, I've been shot and this actually hurts. What is this? Sensubi. Hmm. Like he becomes like the mo like he becomes like the most powerful cop on the force because he still kind of has like a little bit of power and then his, and then his wife makes fun of him for being weak <laughs> now. Damn. It's yeah. like used to be so strong and I'm like oh. Um, it's kind of a trope though that pisses me off where characters just have like a training arc that you just don't see. Like Bleach does this very specifically for one of the biggest fights, where it's like they have a dimension that they use to travel between other dimensions, which they set up like in episode 20 of the show which is really fucking early and time travels like a hundred times slower in that dimension and they like just uh -huh. use that as a throwaway line but for like the the big fight towards the very end i say the very end it's like the end of the first big arc they um they have him training in that little area for like he says it's like okay, i've been training for like two years but it's only been like maybe a couple days for you guys what and I hate that. I hate that so fucking much because it's like, no, why, why, why is he now this powerful? Like, if I feel like everything before this has just been thrown away now, because it's like I mean, that's, that's exactly what the high, uh, fucking hyperbolic time chamber does. It's, it's, so it's a lazy. Day, a day, e a day equals a year. So go, so Goku and Gohan trained to be Super Saiyans in there. <laughs> in it's the Vegeta and Trunks. Mach it's it's just Saiyan so Prime. lazy, in my opinion. Like you. Just oh, fucking no, it, show them absolutely. getting stronger. Oh, that's the thing. Even with the hyperbolic time chamber, they show it, but they show for us what is like real time, more or less, for us. Mm. So it's just like it just looks like they're normally training. And then actually, you know, it's like yeah, no, it's been like a year, <laughs> or it's been like uh, less than a couple of minutes. And but for us, it's been like we've been there for years. Like what? Yeah, I just. Oh. I feel like they could just handle that better, and I feel like it's just a MacGuffin. That they, it's a trope and a MacGuffin that they pull out too often. I like how we started with this, and it's like, it's overpowered characters. That show, god, the more I realize it, the show in general for Dragon Ball is... Th itself is just overpowered. Like, just everything about it. There is nothing that is just, like, normal powerful. Everything is <laughs> overpowerful. It is just ridiculously overpowered in oh, no. yeah it, it keeps getting worse in dragon ball because you know it's beerus the god of destruction he can literally he can literally touch a table and half the planet explodes and then and then it's hinted that his angel that the angel is stronger than beerus because beerus is afraid of his angel yeah and then there's the god of the multiverse who who is of i don't i don't remember if they ever showed his power but he's so but he apparently is so ultra powerful that I think he literally destroyed an entire universe because he was bored with it. Yeah. And then, right. and then there's two, and then there's two of them because Goku accidentally creates another one. Oh my god. Because <laughs> Goku, Goku's given this item that lets him summon the god of the multiverse to help him at some point, and then he uses it in an alternate timeline, so he creates <laughs> two gods of the multiverse in his timeline. And everybody's pissed. Like Beerus is pissed that he created two gods of the multiverse. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Like, okay, can we please yeah. move on? Dragon Ball. Uh, yeah. I, I was gonna say like, I, I was I'm gonna, gonna like, go. I'm, I'm gonna go back to my cave. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I was gonna lead into Dragon Ball to like the rest of Shonen Jump because they all kind of have the same problem. I hate, I hate animes with forms. Yeah, I. I feel like Bleach does that okay because it's not in your face and it's not necessarily forms, it's just other types of power. But I know exactly what you're talking about, fucking Luffy's different gears and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, I, I, I hate Luffy's gears are dumb. Especially when he starts to get like was it gear fourth where he's just like he's like fat and he bounces. I hate yeah, gear that four look looks is so just, dumb. Uh... 
like his his legs become like springs and he just bounces and then <laughs> when he fights Kachikuri he develops snake man where he like snakes his punches around like hot I, I uh, like I, I like one like I love one piece I like even though I hate the I even though like Luffy bothers me I, I'm not I'm not going to dart too much on one piece because it's one of my favorite series but like like the the power like I, I'm glad that it, one piece doesn't have too much of a problem with power scaling because it's kind of like uh kind of like what do you call it uh jojo where it's like oh different characters have different powers so they can you know kind of counter each other yeah i love i love when animes do that like i, I help ruby gets further into that and stuff like that where it's different abilities counteract other abilities instead of you just being so strong you stop this ability outright mm-hmm. yeah, but then like because the, cause there's like the hot like it used to just be regular skill and then they introduced hockey which is bad just because Luffy has all three and then Luffy has the gears and his power is just super powerful even though it's just rubber it's like you know he can make his body rubber but somehow that makes him ultra powerful yeah I mean like Naruto has a really also kind of bad example of an overpowered character because I mean fucking I'm gonna put the, the video about Plague of Gripes talking about how shitty of a character Naruto actually is. But, like, it, it, the, the whole story is about you overcoming hardships and all this other stuff, but he's just given the power of gods at the beginning of the story. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't have access to it, and it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah like, the, there's, what is it? there's, like, the, there's, like, the nine beasts that, you know, they each have, like, a different number of tails, and I'm pretty sure the Nine Tails is just already the most powerful one. Yeah, and he has that, and he has that. Plus, he has like a bunch of techniques that he. Naruto does do that, which I kind of like, where they you can combine multiple techniques to develop like kind of a mixed technique, and I love that. Oh yeah, like, like it's really creative of that. Like I love like the Shadow Clone Rasengan. Yeah, like, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, but at the same time, cool. I just I hate how powerful Naruto is as a character. Yeah, cause actually, I, I, like I don't know too much about Naruto, but I know it gets like really weird. Cause he has like that weird form where he's like yellow. Yeah, and he has like the tails and stuff. Like, I I watched a good chunk of Naruto. I kind of stopped watching because I got bored, but I I did watch a good chunk of it. Um, he doesn't start out terribly powerful. I mean, the fucking first episode literally shows him stealing a scroll going into a forest and mastering a technique that, like, even some of the greatest masters couldn't know in, like, a day. Yeah. And this... It's a really powerful technique, yeah. But it's just... it's, I don't know. He doesn't necessarily use it a lot. And, the, and like, I feel like it also kind of has a power scaling thing a bit, where it's like, you know, like, think about like, early, we fight someone like Zabusa, who's just like... He's just kind of this criminal, but then like later on we're fighting gods and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. He it, Plague of Gripes did say it right where he's like, this story should not have been about Naruto, it should have been about Rock Lee, and I completely agree <laughs> with that because oh, fucking man. Rock Lee's best character. Yeah, Rock Lee is awesome. Like when the like when he took off the weights and fought oh, when he was fighting so Gara, he took off the freaking weights. Rad as hell. Yeah, and I was, I was, I was. It was so sad to see like him out of commission for so long. But then when he comes back, it's awesome. Like, was I think Gar's fighting the Bone Guy, and then Rock Lee's like, "I'm back, baby." <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Shonen's a really big guilty party of that, just because mm-hmm. they're just like a oh, fuck you. We need more power in this. Uh, the the oh god what, what's that like new like newer one that like uh, the one with like the kid wants to be like the wizard king or whatever oh black clover black clover yeah yeah i refuse to watch that because like it's uh, like i have a feeling it's probably just like all of that oh yeah no i watched because um one of my coworkers was like obsessed with the show so she forced me to watch like the first couple episodes at work 
And I was like, I can already tell this is going to develop like every other fucking shonen thing I've ever seen. I I remember like I heard someone say like he wants to like someone made a joke is like he wants to be king of the Hokage or whatever. And they just stacked like they just stacked like Luffy's hat with like. Like, okay. Like they, they just put like every shonen character's hat on him. I, I I will I will just lay this out for you from what I remember. So the whole thing is that they get tomes that mm-hmm. essentially give them magical powers, but the tomes like select them, and uh, it's like oh really good ones. I think they have like three, or no, they, I think like think like the top tier is like four, um, like leaves on the clover on the book, but he gets five. And everyone's like, oh man, why does he get five? You know, whatever, he's just a weak guy. And he has, like, the strongest book ever made, essentially. <laughs> that's, like, the first two episodes, so it's not... I feel I, I feel like that's a bit of a good story. Because even though we're talking about overpowered characters, can we talk about overpowered tropes and how they come about? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, this, I, 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 this episode's just about overpoweredness, I guess. I know. I'm so tired of seeing the... He has a he has a power thought long forgotten in an ancient time, or like he holds a mystical artifact that we haven't seen for years. The death note. Or or, man, that power seems really shitty. Oh wait, turns out it's fantastic. And ah, uh, I like I get that you can only do so much. If if you're not creative, I guess I feel like there's other ways. I'm so tired of seeing like those three versions. I feel like I see so much either ancient mystical power that this person somehow starts off with ancient mystical item that someone somehow starts off with or finds or man, your power really sucks. Oh, wait, turns out it's not. No, no. What my the one I hate the another one I hate really hate that I see every once in a while is like the one where it's like there's these like these are the powers in this world. And usually a person only can have one. Oh, oh you're the main character. You yeah, have all of them. Uh, Again, the Luffy is one, one of these. Oh, the only one I like that that works in is the Avatar. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, no, the only one that I like how that works in is point. Avatar. That's, yeah, well, I guess because like, it doesn't feel inherently overpowered. They have to earn the it, insanity, Exactly. I guess. They still have to learn it. And also, I feel like it's also a matter of scale. Because I feel like when it's something like that, it's like we have ten ancient magical powers or whatnot. With Avatar, it's, it, it's four space elements. That one's not too bad. But if you have like ten or twenty different things that oh, this person just naturally knows how to do, where they're a lot more naturally inclined to be able to do these more than anyone uh, else, it's like eh, that seems a bit okay. Much I think there. what it is is that. If the main character is just some Joe Schmo fuck and he has all of the powers, that's kind of bullshit. But when it's somebody significant and special in the universe, like the Avatar, then it kind of makes more sense. Yeah. I feel like that also comes down to the story, too. It, I, I This goes way back to our our, our episode about... Well, not way back. But this goes back to our episode about power systems and or magic systems in general. I think it also depends on how it's written. If you write it out to where it makes sense, then Fuck, yeah, that's episode I mean, two. Yeah, you should go check yeah. that out. Link in the description. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When we get when we get to Isekai, I, want, I definitely want to go back to the a character with all of the things. I have one <laughs> example of the worst Isekai anime I've ever seen. And I definitely want to talk about that later. But I wanted to mention like the, about the the shitty power thing. There's mm-hmm. one anime I love called uh, Battle Within Everyday Life, and like all the characters have powers. And then the main character, his power is that he just has a lukewarm black flame, and oh, everybody's yeah. like, and everybody's like, oh, that's kind of crappy, and it, it is crappy. Like I haven't read, I haven't read the manga or anything, so I'm not sure if it becomes powerful or something. But I love the fact that it's just a crappy power that does nothing. Also, real quick, we, I can't believe we forgot about this, and I'm, I feel ashamed that we forgot about this. Fucking Gurren Lagann. Oh yeah, Gurren Gur- yeah. Lagann has <laughs> yeah. crazy the power scale, and they they start oh. so like low scale, and then they go with, like so moon sized robots. If no, it galaxy sized. No. Yeah, you know, it's a like galaxy. They literally were throwing galaxies around like they slammed box. two together and called the Big Bang attack, and I was like, oh my god, 
It's like, if it wasn't so hype, it would be horrible, but it was the hypest shit on the fucking planet. So good. Oh, oh man. Sorry, I just had to mention that. We couldn't not no, talk about no, Grand Long Island. No, that is absolutely a fair point. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know how we kind of skipped over that. I don't either. It, yeah, cause I feel like Dragon Ball doesn't earn it, but like Gurren Lagann somehow does. I don't know exactly how it manages to deserve this, but it does. Yeah, absolutely. I guess because it doesn't get carried away with it. Like that's the finale. It's not like they keep going after that. <laughs> they have yeah. to fight multi-dimensional giant robots. Yeah. Oh, I, I think you said it best in the beginning. Like, if it's something that's long run like that, like a lot of, well, not a lot of, but like the better shonen animes are, I think that's honestly where you fight, where you get the bad overpowered characters or bad overpowered MacGuffins, magic systems, whatever have you. I, I think that one comes down to length and time. Yeah. Because, like you said, Gurren like on. Their scale ramps up super quickly in the matter of 24, 25 episodes. Yeah. But oh, yeah, for it, Dragon it just Ball, keeps going up been, and up. Yeah, but for Dragon Ball, where it's going up and up and up over years of both in show and out of show with like 20 to 40 freaking episodes a season, it's just like, and every time it's a new, more powerful threat where you thought, man, that last guy. Yeah, really powerful. He almost had the powers of, like a god or something. Oh, now we're fighting a god, and uh, oh, and, and now we fought a god. Well, what's next? I, I I truly believe that Dragon Ball should end. Like all great stories should end before they hit that mm -hmm. point. Oh, it should have it, it should have ended after the cell. It should the cell saga should have been the end, end of the entire series. It, it made it was the perfect ending, and then they ruined it by having Boo. Mm -hmm. Go Gohan. Go like if. Gohan should have been the main character. I was like, if they wanted to continue it, Gohan should have been the main character. Goku shouldn't have come back. Gohan deserved it. Yeah. They okay. ruined Gohan. So, they ruined Gohan so bad. Real quick, I do want to ask Jared about a specific uh, overpowered character because I want to, I want his opinion on this. Uh, Hamut's Mesita. I thought we were going to avoid this. No, well, we are, but I just, I don't want to talk about the show. I just want to talk about her. The, the funny thing is, uh, I have a good idea what you guys are talking about <laughs> just because of Jet Seething Ray. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to explain this while Jarrett fucking cools down. She has the ability to... I, I need scotch. Well, she has a couple <laughs> powers, but what, her main power is she has these sensory threads, which are like... Imagine stuff's like thinner than Spider's Web that she can fan out uh, about the width of a city, give or take. And she can see and feel everything that's going on that these sensors are touching. And so she can then use that to attack people from super far distances. And she's just really just strong in general because of just some circumstances shown in the show later on. Granted, her main weapon is a slingshot. No, not even a slingshot. A sling. Okay, like you can't old... tell me that, it's, that isn't the hype as shit when there's like a storm behind her. She's just fucking launching rocks to kill people. That's a cool scene. Come on. Going back to my cave. Um, okay, but uh, so disregarding all of that bullshit of um, the Book of Antora, do you think that's a decent example of a simple ability that turned overpowered? I think that is a mix of things. Granted, the sensory thread, I think its range is what. Granted, its range and its what it does is very strong, but it's not like. Uh, how do I put this? It's not like it's an attack or something. It's not like, oh, this is my ultimate maneuver. This is a utility thing that she then backs up with her crazy other things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the preflex so from think... uh, Ruby. Yeah, I don't think that... I don't think that the ability in itself is overpowered. I Do I think she is overpowered? Absolutely. Yeah. But I think that, like, if, if we're just talking about that one ability, no, not overpowered. Very well used. I'll give her that. But I think her herself, yes, overpowered. Very much overpowered. A lot of people in that show are overpowered. And, <laughs> yeah. But that that's still its own episode. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, I guess we're just kind of dancing around all over the place. Because I keep remembering more and more interesting ones like... Um, very briefly talk about the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya again for the millionth time. 
how she's just gone and it mm -hmm. doesn't just necessarily just interfere with the story but it is like a plot device and i love that i mean i, I mean i'm just glad that it's not an it's not really an action anime so like yeah she is overpowered but she's not it's not like she's fighting or anything <laughs> that's true that's, just, yeah yeah uh, I hate the uh, the ending of Soul Eater, when Maka just punches the Kishin. It kind of pisses me off. <laughs> it's like I get it. Like that's another trope I hate. It's like when they get the power of love or friendship or some generic bullshit that then mm. like defeats the villain. It's like no, no. I'd rather see them get cut in half or some cool shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with, like, the whole, it's like, oh, I found my inner strength kind of thing. I don't like the, I finally, like, I found an ancient technique hidden within me. Like, I'm okay with, like, sheer force of will driving you to keep going and striving and maybe getting more powerful. I hate ancient magical MacGuffin coming out of nowhere to ex machina your way through this fight. Yeah. It's like, if you're going to keep going might as well have yourself be the reason or like eh, yeah power, power friendship love and whatnot is i feel like so played out and just kind of an odd drive or trigger for stuff yeah like don't don't win with the power of friendship win with just like <laughs> being mad about something like yeah. when goku goes super saiyan for the first time he's pissed because krillin just exploded yeah <laughs> like goku's screaming because krillin exploded yeah <laughs> and then like same thing and then when the cell saga G uh, Gohan's pissed because his dad died, and then and, and then Android sixteen got his head stopped. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can like, only imagine the power Gohan would have had if his you know if if his good dad had actually died in that Piccolo. <laughs> so okay, so do you know what? Uh, I guess there's a trope that I don't see enough, which I really want, which is glass cannons. Because I mean, Deku is kind of that, but he's kind of transitioning to not be. But like Megumi is as well. Where they have one super strong, unstoppable attack, but after that they're out of commission. I feel like Glass Cannons only kind of work as a side character. I mean, Deku kind of, not quickly, but Deku did move on from that, but his progression makes sense. He's, I mean, he's, he still has his Glass Cannon attack, theoretically. He, he does. He just probably won't use it. He's just trying, he's figuring out the buffer for it. Yeah. Megamine is great, but she's also a side character or one of the kind of main characters to uh, Konosuba and like Ruby and stuff is kind of the, that weird middle ground of like there's multiple characters but there's still a main character yeah also we, like speaking of Ruby we never talk about how actually powerful Weiss is Weiss oh, with is the fact really that she, fucking strong but yeah, the fact that not only that does she does everything yeah that and the fact that that's just kind of a neat thing even though semblances are kind of supposed to be yeah. random but the Shinies just kind of keep that and the fact that it's like a multi-purpose uh, a multi-purpose semblance because just, just to list off the abilities that it can do manipulate gravity <laughs> launch range attacks summon giant night boy or other things B <laughs> to be, be. 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 yeah just the the, the potential i love so to point this out in a very s weird small scale thing in the fan made uh, ruby rpg book they split up the abilities of weiss's one semblance into like three because they had gravity effect summoning and glyphs was it all three different yeah. Three different semblances, but she literally has it all in one. Yeah, I just love it's like, oh, what's your semblance? Glyphs. What does that mean? I can do anything. It's <laughs> it's just do whatever the plot needs me to do. And and I love how she's a support. So like you know, sometimes like when they were fighting the giant Nevermore, um, and like Ruby was running up the wall while Weiss was creating glyphs. I love that. That was fucking hype as hell. Oh yeah, no, it's great. But she is absolutely like her semblance is absolutely overpowered with the range they can do and i know you could probably say oh it's her it's her dust that she's using but still the fact that you can do all those crazy things with just dust weiss is, is a insane. good like 
she's trained, like, it's obviously shown that she's trained and been forced to be this good, and I love that. Yeah, and yet, if you see, like, Blake use her stuff with Dust, it's all kind of the same. She still makes a clone. Yeah. It's just kind of different types, like, she's on the ice one where, like, she gets people stuck, or make a concrete one that, like, helps defend herself, or a fire one that it's all flaming, exploding, but, like, Weiss, it's just like, yeah, I can pretty much do whatever, but what I need to summon up a giant boar, summon up a giant night boy, uh, hold my friend down while she is like about to slingshot, help my friend speed up while she's running up a mountain, uh, create a giant ice thing to hold this creature down. Yeah, I can kind of do whatever. It's... And, and it's kind of cool because she's like one of the best mid range mid range fighters out of everyone. Like Ruby's either really yeah. good close range or far range. Yang is really good close range. Blake is kind of a escapee tactic. She doesn't really have a close, good, very close range. Right, so. <laughs> He's very good at running away. <laughs> that's her whole character. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like Weiss is a really just good example of uh, a typical character who has a really good ability, but I feel like it's somewhat underutilized sometimes. Yeah. Like when they were fighting the mech, I really feel like Weiss theoretically could have just taken that down herself. Maybe. Like, under the correct circumstances, I feel like she could have. Yeah. But, I don't know. <sighs> Real quick, Salem in that show as well is a really oh, yeah. well, cool example of... Yeah, of, like, there is a magical force that, like, the main characters... Ob well, I say that they probably can't get, but, like, they obviously can't match Salem 100%. And I love that. I love that it's I like, mean, you cannot attain this specific power. It is impossible for you to get this. It's not even of your world. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> to get into to spoiler. But add that that season's been out for a while. We're almost into the next one. Mm -hmm. At time of recording. Uh, yeah, I mean, plus we put spoiler warnings in the beginning. But yeah, no. In like, oh man. just Like, we haven't seen like the full potential of like what the magic in that world can do yeah but it's already from what we've seen powerful the fact that it is split among like with ozpin the fact that it can be split among five people because i still count him as being magical and still have them have fantastical magical powers is quite impressive the fact that you can split up your magic like that keep a little bit for yourself but still have four people who can be extra and ordinarily strong now ruby has the chance to handle this correctly with like the main characters inheriting the powers or something along those lines ruby has a chance to handle this correctly they have the chance to fuck it up royally though like either like they you know like during the final fight all the other characters give their power to fucking ruby or somebody so that way she can... I don't want a spirit bomb, please. I don't. I would be pissed. I would be so pissed if that happened. Like, it needs to be a team effort because it's Team Ruby. It's not... I don't know. The show is called Ruby, but I it's know. not spelt Ruby. <laughs> I just... I feel like they need to do it correctly and they're... They have the chance to not and I'm terrified to see that because I love the show. Yeah. Yeah. The show has so much potential in... Like I said, they'll, they'll probably do a good job. Maybe a misstep here or there, but... Yeah, don't get me wrong, the show has its problems, and certain writing things I would have done differently, personally, but I do like a lot of stuff that they do. I um, Speaking of things that we, that, that we hope they do well, let's get to the things that haven't done well. <laughs> yeah, so we've talked about the good, the bad, now the ugly. Hello, isekai's genre. <laughs> yes, the isekai genre, or for... Also, who for you less weeaboo inclined, another world. Also, can it be fitting that we're in another world as we talk about this? Oh, shit. <laughs> in, the, you know, in the Shadow Realm cave. Uh. <sighs> uh, also, I'm uh, really surprised that we can get an internet connection down here. Oh, yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, mm -hmm. e Ethernet cord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we're going to have to follow that back. It's a... Uh... Bit of <laughs> it's, our, it's, yeah, it's our only way uh, we brought it in with us <laughs> we know it's still connected because we still have internet so if it ever gets disconnected we're kind of at odds so yeah so like the isekai genre is i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go and say that they're all bad it's just that 
90% of them are god-awful. More often than not, it's the less than stellar overpowered characters. When they yeah. take it too seriously, it's really done poorly. Like, like, cause, like, you know, the whole, ugh, just like the East Kai genre, it's always like, it's just a person being reincarnated in, a, in another world. And like, that could just be it. Like, that could just be the thing. It's a guy from our world in a new world. But they always have to do something with it. They always have to give the main character a power that makes them ultra powerful for no reason. I don't know why they always do this. So let's start out with, as you said earlier, the king of the ugly, fucking Sword Sorry. Art Online. Mm. Oh. And they gave the character the ability to dual wield. The, well, dual not, wield. Dual wield. <laughs> Oh my god, he can hold two weapons at the same time! Oh my god! Oh, no, there's so much wrong with that show. Let's see, yeah, off the bat, dual wielding. The fact that he is somehow able to hack into the system. Oh no, don't remind me of that scene! No, I don't want to remember! I hate- I- it's the worst anime scene of all time! Yeah. Oh! He could've- he could've saved so many people's lives! Oh, the fact that he is- Oh god, what did he do in part two? Something crazy that he shouldn't be able to do with his ma illusion magic. Oh, man. Yeah, it's... He, mm, he shouldn't that, be that strong for that reason. Like, like don't get, you can make the main character strong, yeah. Don't make it a stupid-ass reason, like, oh, he has a thing that no one else has. It's like, no. Like, there's, there's like, the... Really early, there's, like, the moment where he's, like... In the in the almost almost kind of filler episode where he's trying to help the girl revive her dragon, and like there's like five dudes hitting Kirito, but Kirito out heals them. Oh yeah, mm. like they can't even hurt him because he's healing too fast. So bad. And then like Kirito, like and and I I hate it when he gets out of Sword Art Online because he's still powerful in other games that he plays for oh, yeah. for no real reason. Like, when he <laughs> plays Gun Gale, it's, it's a game all about guns. He's just using a sword. <laughs> yeah, okay, so <laughs> he's, his whole thing is that he uses swords. He's a really good, like, he trains and I think he does kendo in real life. So you're like, okay, maybe. No, no, no. he did kendo. He hadn't done it for, like, forever yeah. in the show. He did kendo. Like, his so cousin all... Oh my god, his cousin, who was still doing kendo, sucks compared to him using a sword. Oh. Yeah, okay, so there's already the suspicion of this belief that he doesn't do kendo anymore, but somehow he's still really good with swords in these VR games. But then he plays a game that's all about guns, and then he picks up he picks up a lightsaber, and they're like, everybody's like, that's like the worst weapon in the game. It's a melee weapon in a gun game. And he's like, I'll make it work. And somehow he's like the most powerful with this shitty weapon. That's such bullshit. Uh, it's so like you're telling you're telling me no one discovered how good these lightsabers were until uh, until Kirito decided to use one. Uh. I mean, I guess the way that I like the um, the genre handled though is like I love how Konosuba does it, where it's like he's he doesn't have a power like that. He's just kind of smart and he's played this kind of game before. Oh no, he gets around it. Like, he knows also, the exploits. I, also, I think they played that well. Because in the beginning, he did have that choice. He did have that <laughs> that thing that all... that Not all, but a lot of Isekais guys have. Hey, you're starting a new world. Fuck, I like didn't it? even think would about like, that. Yeah, would you like a crazy ability or power or, or item? Be just an asshole and got revenge. Yeah, yeah you just picked the goddess because she was an asshole. And we see the other guy who did choose something crazy. Yeah, he, We yeah. saw the titular anime, or isekai character. And he just kind of gets his stuff stolen. God, yeah, kind of super is too woke. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite thing is that we see a character who is just like a weird analog for Kirito. He's got like, he's got this super ultra rare sword and he's got like girls all over him. And yeah. then Kirito just steals his sword and pawns it off. And the guy's like, give me back my sword. <laughs> oh. God, kind of is too woke for this world. Uh, that's what I, that's what I love about Konosuba is that it realizes how bad its genre is and decides to have fun with it. They're like, this is what it should be like. Yeah, and I love that. Uh, so, I, oh, okay, hold on, before, because this actually does kind of tie in slightly. Uh, 
can we point out the fact that technically uh, Kobayashi's dragons also overpower characters for that world? Um, yeah. so kind of, in, a, in a weird way. Because they are still crazy, powerful dragons that are just kind of being you know, mates and regular people. Yeah. yeah, but it's not really an action. It's more of a slice of life than an action. And they're obviously that they're the super powerful because they're dragons among humans. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, yeah. But, uh, and then it's, yeah, so, so what are some other isekais? Because I don't know a whole lot of them. Uh, one one that I think is another really bad example that like I, I like I know people who love this anime and like I try my hardest but like I've even seen all three seasons I still like have such a hard time with it and that's Overlord like I just don't like I don't like Overlord very much just because like the main character the main character he never goes through any strife because he's just so powerful and all of his minions are powerful like they like they kind of do what like one punch man does where they create side characters to kind of like have the drama filter through mm-hmm. and then that's exactly what it is they introduce like random characters that we've never seen before and then they they either die or get close to dying for the drama and then if any of the main characters decide to get involved they just win instantly like, yeah that doesn't sound terribly great. I haven't seen any of Overlord yet, but... Yeah, just... it, your main character should go through some kind of strife in some way, shape, or form if it's not, like, a comedy or something along those lines. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, like I feel like any arc that like, kind of evo- it revolves around the main character is bad. And any character, any arc that revolves around anything else is good. Like, one arc I really love is the arc where the main characters are going to invade the Lizard Man territory. So the whole arc is about these lizard men like unifying their tribes and trying to fight back. Huh. Of, of course, they obviously lose though because the main <laughs> character is so powerful. But you know, yeah. it's still a good arc, and we get weird lizard sex. And... Okay, that's All right. didn't need to know that. <laughs> uh, what the fuck what was her name? Oh, Crush Lulu's best girl. <laughs> Crush Lulu. Right, I'm gonna have to find that because I don't. <laughs> um, but, um, so what was some other interesting isekais that slime? Uh, yeah, I actually wanted to talk about slime. I think slime is actually a good overpowered character isekai. So I, I actually like slime. I don't know much about slime, so run it through real quick. Uh, it's essentially a a a character a guy is reborn into a world into a fantasy world you know the huge yeah uh, and he's born he's reborn as a slime and he has this like weird ability where he can kind of adapt and absorb abilities so like he 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 starts in this cave that's filled with all these magical plants so he eats all the magical plants and becomes like so he he like his his slime fluid can now like heal people. And huh. He has like so much pa- magical powers. Then he eats a dragon and he gains like dragon powers. <laughs> he like every time he eats like every time he eats like some sort of monster, he gains that monster's abilities. So how does that translate to? Well, how how, do, how is this good? Because from what you're saying, this sounds like the formula to a bad one. Because like I because I feel like it's not like him. Because I feel like it's not like him just like, yeah, he's like ultra powerful, but I feel like it's, I kind of like it because it's him just trying to unify, like he wants to make like a monster paradise, essentially. He wants to make like a perfect city for monsters. So like, you know, it's like a lot of like little politics and stuff, which is pretty fun. Hmm. That seems interesting. Uh, I actually did kind of think of another one because... I don't know how I forgot about this because this fits into both. Uh, Mao from Devil's a Part Timer. <laughs> That's kind I mean, of a joke. reverse isekai in a weird way. I mean, still kind of an isekai. It's just like yeah, no, coming it is. to it's our just... world. But yeah, no, literally the all powerful demon devil. The devil. He's just straight up the devil in that world. Full of these magical, fantastical powers. Just comes to Japan and starts working at a McDonald's. 
even though we do still see how crazy powerful he is, and even the... Uh, because at first it's like his magic is dampened, but like, when we see that stuff unleashed, it is insane. The fact that he punches uh, Lucifer into like... God, I don't even know like how he how he lived through that. I still don't understand. <laughs> when he gets like yeah, when he gets like super buff and like has the horns and all that. Oh yeah, and then literally all the magical symbols are lined up behind Lucifer or er, behind his punch to boost it. I'm like, oh. Uh, another pretty good one. The one that I like at least is a uh, Saga of Tiny the Evil. Oh, I love Saga of Tiny the Evil because <laughs> like I love it. That's my favorite. You said that. It's like, she, yeah, she's super over, she, he, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Um, they're super overpowered in, the, like, this brilliance and, you know, weird magical potential, but it's like a curse upon them, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, I, I just love it. Like, I love, I love, like, other characters' perspectives, where they're like, oh, she's this, she's this super devoted religious person, but she only prays because she has to. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Though, though, I always, I always find it weird because, like, why, why did the, like, why did the god give her such powerful powers? I don't know. You yeah. think if it was to be a punishment, it would have been like the other it, way around, yeah. which like cannon fodder. But yeah, it, like it's supposed to be a punishment, but like the god just keeps giving her more powerful powers, and then the god then gives other people powers to contest her, like yeah. the one. Like the one American dude. Oh no, I think it was like the British. Cause the girl goes to America. Yeah, it's like the. I think he's like the British dude with the shotgun and all that. Like he becomes. Like he gets god powers and then his daughter gets god powers. Which I think is what the movie's gonna be about. Yeah. Like it would have been slightly better if you would have given him a tiny amount of power so that he would have been drafted, but not enough to be like the status that he was. Or she was, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit weird. Yeah. Still handled amazingly. I have a side question. I don't know why this anime popped in my head. Have either of you watched Assassination Classroom? I love Assassination Classroom. Dude, that's a great, that's a great overpowered character. <laughs> I was just Thanks for talking about Assassination Classroom. Yeah, I... I have not watched it yet, but I know... A, very tiny about it and I just, just think about it I'm like I feel like this could work for the situation but I couldn't holistically remember so yeah so that's, okay like I know we already passed the good but I have to talk about assassination classroom we're all over the, the place the main... don't feel bad <laughs> yeah Koro sensei is just like he's so ultra powerful like that's the whole anime is about is that these kids have to kill him but he's so powerful that they can't kill him because he moves at like was he moves, he moves at like Mach 10 or something like that Jeez. like he yeah he, he's just like he's and then like the very rare instances where they actually kill him he's like haha I can actually just like come back again you have to kill me like twice in a row or some like oh my young God. shit but they it, it's just so good because of how like how powerful Koro Sensei is and then they all the kids have to like learn all these new techniques so they can get better at being assassins and then like they fight like you know they fight like other characters like they fight like other assassins and stuff is like, there, there, there's one arc where like course sensei is just like a ball the whole time so they have to rely <laughs> on their own powers is that an anime you'd recommend to people that like uh stuff like that action anime Sorry. i guess yeah, if you like, yeah, just action, comedy, like a little bit of like sci-fi into like normal things. Yeah, if you just like over, if you like good overpowered characters, <laughs> fucking Assassination Classroom was it got like two, uh, is that, two, two seasons, yeah, two. maybe a third on the way. Uh, no, no, it oh. ended. <laughs> oh, it ended. Ah, yeah, it, it's it's over. So yeah, it's only two seasons. Watch it. It's good, and it's the complete story. You don't have to like. You know, be like, oh man, they'll have to wait for another season or I have to read the manga. It's the whole thing. Uh, kind of a, another bullshit one to just jump back a little bit to. Um, and it's kind of a weird one too. It's like Yu Gi Oh! Because Yu Gi just has the ability to be good at games. 
And it's such are, a... Are we, gonna, are we gonna talk about the dice one? <laughs> I mean, we can't... Yeah, it's just... It's any game he plays, he essentially is going to win. And it's... Oh, so we're going into manga territory then. <laughs> yeah. Woo! He... Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. But, like, the thing is, is, like, he isn't just overpowered because of abilities. He's just super lucky and has, like, friendship power. Yeah. And an ancient pharaoh in his... In his... In his, uh, in his sleeve to, and sends people, people yeah, to the Shadow but... Realm. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, we're here. Yeah, which is... I, I know, we haven't left. Oh, good, good thing we're in the English dub, because if we're in the Japanese dub, we would just be dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of how I know that I was actually here for a while, because thankfully the person I was dealing with was English. Well, slightly Italian. But... It was... I was wondering when those people were pointing their fingers at us. <laughs> yeah, they're pointing their fingers at us. One, one dude had a hammer gun. I wasn't really sure. Like it, <laughs> it was like a hammer on a spring. It's really weird. Like, uh, there was a dude. There was a giant hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow Realm is just the four kids' garbage bin. <laughs> oh, um... But yeah, it, it's it's just like such a weird bullshit ability because it, it lends all fights with him in it completely pointless in a way. Uh, it, it's like, you know, um, I, I, I like some of the fights that have like May, uh, My Valentine and uh, Ikaiba even, even though it's still stacked in their favor and all that shit, but they still lose. Like, I can only think of maybe a handful of times Yugi actually loses. Yeah. I mean, there's the point where, like, the pharaoh's soul gets absorbed because they lose. Yeah. Or the weird-ass finale where it's the pharaoh versus Yuki. It's like... Uh... Like, like, this is... Uh, it's it's bad because he's overpowered, but he, it's not like he has a reason to be overpowered. Like, he doesn't have, a, he doesn't have any powers. Mm -hmm. He's just really, really lucky. Well, no, that's his friends that's, believe in him. That's his power in the Millennium Puzzles to be good at games. He's the king of games. <laughs> yeah, but 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 like it's a it's a a card game with luck. Yeah, like you you can't just be inherently better at that. Like like unless you like you go like deck building, but Yuki's deck fucking sucks. He keeps Karibo and shit in that. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, I think the other version of that's super bullshit is Joey's deck, which has like 40 monsters and nothing else. But <laughs> you guess for another day. I summon flame swords. <laughs> you don't even have polymerization, Joey. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Thousand year dragon. That's not how you make that card. <laughs> oh, God. First two seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh are amazing. Um... Yeah, I mean, more, more bad isekais. Yeah, let's get, get back into the isekai. So, so what other ones are there that exist? Because um, I don't watch a whole lot of isekais. I, 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 I want like maybe mention a few more before I before I talk rant about the one. Oh, Kirito is not the one. Oh no, God no! <laughs> oh, oh my! Sora Online is not the one. <laughs> he may be the oh. king of the ugly, but he's not the god of the ugly. <laughs> I'm not really gonna talk about Shield Hero because I just refuse to watch Shield Hero. I just don't. I've been burned too many times. People, people assure me that Shield Hero is good. I'm just like, I don't know. It's got, it's got like Fox Law. It's got like Raccoon Wally, but I just can't. Like, <laughs> like it's it, it it's it's the example of a main character. The main character. All, all I know about it is that the main character he's like one of four legendary heroes even though he's reborn into this world and he has a shitty power that he somehow makes a lot good use out of. Uh-huh. So because he because he, he has the shield. Literally checking all the fucking tropes for Isekai shit. Yeah. Um, so go ahead with what you were saying. Or another one that you wanted to mention. Or we could just talk chair. about the do, king of the one. Do you have a uh, any chair? Trying to think of ones that we haven't covered. Isekai is not not a huge part of my library, but um, it should be. 
I mean, I mean, the concept can work. It's just it's yeah. been I, I mean, thoroughly are, mishandled. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there are good ones. One of my favorite animes, like a couple of my favorite animes, are Isekai. I love Tanya. I love my favorite animes, Dog Days, for Christ's sake. <laughs> like, but there's just like you know, it, Isekai is a slippery slope. No, it, it it shouldn't be a slippery slope, but they made it one. <laughs> they, they poured water on this dirt hill. Yeah, okay, so overpowered <laughs> characters, slippery slope, right? <laughs> Isekai's unnecessary slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, they put a slip and slide on here for some reason. It doesn't need to be here. No, oh, I feel like one guy made it and everyone's like, I want to copy this guy. It's like, no, you don't. Stop. Oh my god, I don't know why I just now realized that Digimon is an Isekai. <laughs> It's like one of the oldest ones that I just don't realize that it is. Oh, uh, that that kind of hurts me on on a fundamental level. Okay, so Zach, what what is this supreme one that you want to okay. rip shit about? So it's called. Was it? Oh, fuck what? Uh, I can't exactly remember the name specifically, but it's like brought to an I, I went to another world with my cell phone or some dumb shit like that oh yeah i know which one you're talking about this oh, that one. is the worst isekai i have ever seen so like in an anime about a guy like okay so then obviously it has the shitty light novel title where the where the title explains the entire synopsis <laughs> so obviously you know what it's about it's about a guy goes to isekai with a phone what what do you what do you think that entails? What do you, what do you think a guy with a phone can do in, in a in an in a fantasy world? I'm gonna say bullshit. Literally everything, <laughs> anything that needs to be done, he can do it with this fucking cell phone. Okay, so so, okay, so give us some how, examples. Okay, so like fucking. I mean, like obviously he can use like, he can do it like normal phone things, which makes sense, you know, like oh it can do phone things. But then he like channels like magic and shit through it, and he can just do dumb shit like make a make a track people with a fucking GPS app because because he fucking can. Uh huh. Tell, like, ugh. like like he uses this phone for so much, but like the phone. Okay, so remember how I, remember how I talked about the thing of like the main character having all of the powers. Yeah. Yes. So this anime, they're like, I think there were like four or five types of magic and they're like, so they're like, oh, it's hard to even learn one type of magic. It's very rare to learn two types of magic. And then there's this one like black magic that only very few people can learn. What type of magic do you know? I know all of them. Oh. oh. That hurts me so inside actually. <laughs> Yeah, he knows all of the types of magic. He's ultra powerful. He has a harem of girls. He he actually I think he beats like a god like two gods and then they become his familiars. So far we pretty much have all the boxes checked. <laughs> yeah, quite literally. Yeah. yeah. Like literally like anything this character wants to do, he can do it. Either involving the magic, the the arsenal of magic he has. Or his fucking cell phone. Yeah, that kind of seems pretty bullshit, actually. Yeah, that is like, unnecessarily. Man, he literally too. is like ticking all the boxes. Uh, I've run out of check marks. <laughs> wow. Um, that it. Oh. Yeah, that My just God. That, doesn't, that doesn't sound like it's an appealing so, thing to watch because like you want to see somebody so struggle or be relatable, but he's just like, oh yeah, I can do anything. I'm God. Fuck yeah. you. And he's not. Yeah. Also, he's not even a good main character. He's just so milk toast. Uh, oh. It's big he's sad. just yeah. He's just like the guy who goes around. All the girls are in love with him, and then he's just like kind of oblivious to it. The fact that girls just want to bang him all the fucking oh, time. Oh God. I'm not a huge fan of that trope. Also, at some point, he gets a fucking mansion. <laughs> I, like, a king or something gives him a mansion. I think he gets, like... I think he, like, saves a slave and he becomes, like, the maid or something. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so confused. So, okay, so let's talk about some wasted potential with overpowered stuff, because I can think of one really good example. Which is Rohan. 
from part four JoJo. Okay. I'm glad they didn't try and capitalize yeah. on Rohan. Rohan is <laughs> powerful. Rohan has the end-all be-all stand, essentially. Could take over the world if he so chooses, but just... He doesn't. He just wants to draw manga all day. <laughs> creepy, creepy manga. Yeah. Oh. You know, he has the ability to fucking write anything in somebody and it's instantly true regardless of what the fuck it is. Yeah, even if it somehow defies physics. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it, you know, it makes sense that Araki, like, killed him, uh, not killed him off, but, like, eliminated him first out of everyone else during the Bites the Dust arc. Just because he would have been, like, the one guy that would have been able to just be like, ah, yeah, you're done. But... It, I don't know, there's not a whole lot of wasted potential characters like that, like, he's obviously a huge glaring example of it, but it's almost good that he is, because if he was used his fullest ability, it would have been boring and broken and annoying. Like, it, yeah, like, it's not like one of the instances where, like, a character JoJo has, like, a super powerful ability, but then they just, like, lose because they get perfectly countered. Like, he, you know, when he fights <laughs> fucking cheap trick and his power doesn't work on cheap trick because cheap trick is technically his stand or the rock bird boy to man because he like absorbs oh, yeah. part of his stand yeah but like both like both times he tries to use his fucking stand it reflects on himself and it's even simple powers which again is the thing i love is simple powers defeating overpowered abilities oh on that same thing with like wasted potential um Okiasu in the hand just if that stand was literally in the hands of anyone smarter <laughs> that stand is so powerful yeah it's so it has so many possibilities hey boske just, just wasted wasted on a gorilla that's what i love about i mean that, that was the intention of that character and i love that but well, at the same time it's such it's so like, sad just seeing like oh it's yeah big well, waste. like yeah that's what i that's what i like that it isn't like writing like it's not like ma wasted potential through the writing it's wasted potential in the actual universe like even yeah. other characters <laughs> realize that it's it's wasted potential they're like man imagine if he wasn't done um, yeah yeah <sighs> so, so when it comes to a lot of main characters like so i don't know a whole lot about one piece but i have a question for you zach um Luffy is obviously insanely powerful, but is the rest of his crew not necessarily on par, but, like, have the ability to kind of fight alongside him without it being, like, an obvious Luffy is carrying them? Uh, it, it kind of depends. Yeah, it kind of depends on the situation. Like, when, um, was it, when they fought in, in the whole Cake Island arc where they fought in the forest... Luffy, Luffy was fighting all these biscuit guys, and like Luffy was starting to get overpowered by the just the vast amount of the biscuit soldiers. And then Nami, Nami realized like, oh, I can use rain to get them wet, and then Luffy can eat them. So they kind of team up that way. When it comes to like the crew, it's kind of like a hierarchy where it's like Luffy's on Luffy's number one, Sanji and Zoro are supposed to be like number two. I guess the Jimbe would kind of be somewhere like two or three, and then it's just like everybody else. Like, yeah, everybody else is pretty strong. Okay, he's still obviously the strongest out of everyone else, though. Because oh yeah, God yeah. Because because like Bleach does it kind of interestingly, where every everyone in the show starts out relatively the same power level, but two characters exceed everyone by like a landslide. And then one character essentially has barely any growth and just is like a shitty, useless character after like the first arc. Uh, like, like, even in One Piece, like, the other characters refer to Sanji, Luffy, and Zoro as the big three of the crew uh, because they're the three most powerful. Huh. And then, and and then like I think there's even like a point where they, like, a couple characters. I think like was it Sanji? Oh, not Sanji. Um. Fucking Usopp, Nami, and uh, fuck, what's his name? Sn the sniper guy, or the Usopp. They refer to themselves as like the like the loser three or something like that. 
because like they're the weak ones even though now Usopp's a fucking jacked as shit Usopp's fucking buff even though he's like a sniper nice Because uh, I've seen a lot of the things that handle that in like an interesting way, but it, it, I hate it when the main character just ends up carrying his friends the entire fucking time. Mm-hmm. Like Bleach kind of does that, but the thing is, is one of his friends semi betrays him, and so they are like rivals for a bit. But then you find out like later that it was kind of faked. But his friend is so powerful and like a completely different ability, and it's fucking awesome seeing them fight. Can, can, can I talk about one that I actually think is kind of like a little bit of a good overpowered character just because I think the story does it good oh, well. uh, fucking the from that new anime the 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 one with the mom oh your mom attack the mom. is actually two oh. or whatever the fuck it's called yeah yeah because yeah. I because I lo- in story it's like like every time you learn about one of the other moms, it's just revealed that the moms get like the really overpowered abilities, <laughs> and I, lo- I I love that. Like I just find it so funny. Uh, I just love, I love the fact that the mom has these overpowered abilities, but she just like and like the main character is jealous, but she's just like she just cares about her son so much. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. That that shows handling of that is really interesting. It's almost. It's almost uh, similar to like how Konosuba handles it, but I don't think it has the f- foresight of it. I guess, or like the, I- the, it doesn't know the irony that it's trying to portray. It's not as aware of yeah. itself. Yeah, K- Konosuba is so fucking highbrow. Like they, like <laughs> they understand exactly what they're doing, and they do it so. Well. Oh yeah. Um, like, when you think about it, Konosuba, like they. are like they actually are really high level. Like, what it's like, Aqua, Darkness, and Megamine. Like when they talk about their classes, they're super high level classes. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and then you even have people like Wiz and uh, fucking even some throwaway characters that are just insanely overpowered characters. Like fucking the guy who could just if he thinks it, it gets created. <laughs> It's my favorite because that's exactly what would happen if like a, a real isekai thing were to happen they would try for like 20 minutes figure out that they have this ability to do anything and then just fuck off by themselves forever is there uh, uh, oh has anyone watched was it psych psyche k is that it I don't think of. the one with the pink haired dude with like the weird little antenna balls who apparently is like super strong i know what you're talking about but no Oh man, we didn't talk about Bob Psycho either. I was just thinking that but I I haven't watched the show and I didn't know if it quite fit that category. Yeah, yeah I, I know I know Psyche K definitely does because the whole point of Psyche K is that he has like these crazy powers, but then I think like the joke is that he has a hard time controlling them and stuff. But but Mob Psycho Mob Psycho is really good because like the main character it's made by the same guy who makes One Punch Man and it kind of has the similar a very similar feel. It's just the main character is super godly on overpowered. Mm-hmm. So my fav- my favorite part about it is that is that uh the character Ryan, who's just this like he's just really good at lying and so Mob thinks that he's even more power like Ryan's more powerful than him, so he looks up to Ryan. <laughs> nice. There's even like a mo- moment in the first season where his pow- mob's powers go on Ryan, Ryan becomes super fucking powerful. What? So Ryan just like a normal person. Yeah. Isn't he the guy that, like, in the final fight, just has a gun? <laughs> he yeah, he's like he's like an ex uh, he's like an exorcist or whatever, yeah. or like he's supposed to get rid of ghosts and stuff, but he just like he's just really good at lying about it. Like he yeah. pretends that he, he's really good at that, and he just has mob do it for him. That's funny. So, I don't know. Do we feel like we've touched on everything? pretty decently about overpowered characters i think we've touched on quite a bit <sighs> yeah so we've, we've had a nice smattering of yeah things good the bad the ugly and everything in between mm-hmm. um so yeah we should probably pack up and follow the ethernet cable back to the surface i suppose oh well, yeah i can tell you guys about what i've written in my journal on our way back that'd be great so 
uh, thank you for joining us. You can find a li- or you can find the links for everything in the link dump, along with our Twitters and other social medias. If you feel like following us, uh, as always, we post twice. A t- Jesus Christ, twice a month, and occasionally have a special episode. So be sure to stick around. Next week, be sure to join us, uh, for we will be talking about a brand new anime. Well, not a brand new anime, but a new anime for the fucking podcast, My Hero. Yay! <laughs> Yay, we made it! The, the Jojo We're... arc is over! <laughs> and now we can get into much smaller, more condensed oh, not... animes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, and as always, have a good day. Uh, bye, Internet. Hopefully next time we'll be out of the Shadow Realm. Day one. I have discovered this journal. I've begun to write my thoughts upon this as I travel through what I believe to be some kind of shadow realm. After encountering what seemed to be an enemy stand user, I somehow ended up here. I continue moving forward in what seems to be a never-ending cycle of pain and darkness. A lot of darkness. Mostly darkness. I stub my foot on the way in. That's about all the pain I've had. I shall continue in this journal further. Day five. I grow weary. I feel like I should sleep, but yet I have something telling me that I really shouldn't. Hmm. Hopefully, hopefully my friends will find me and get me out of here, or I can find my own way out. Hmm. I will continue in this journal. Day 25. I grow weary for my safety. All I have currently is the sounds of what sounds to be a hoagie tumbling down a hill. Even though I'm not entirely sure if there is a hill. But still, the sound it continues constantly. I shall write again in this journal. <laughs> Day 27. I've begun to found sustenance in this endless darkness. Surprisingly, what I believe to be lollipops. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. I shall continue to write in this journal. Day 47. <laughs> in, in my travels, I have, begun, I have actually begun to found water. I was thoroughly surprised. I still not know how far this tunnel goes, but I hope that I shall reach the end. For I fear that I am going to miss some Super Smash Bros. announcement, and, and, but then I also fear that I won't know what character they're coming out with. Hmm. I'll continue to write into this journal further. Day 52. I don't know why I keep marking these as days. I have no way of telling what time it is. For all I know, I could have been here 52 minutes. Or 52 years. I don't know. Time seems strange here. The only things I have to come from me are the random noises and random flashing lights that I occasionally see. I hope soon that my friends will come rescue me from this hellhole. I shall continue to write into this journal. What can I only assume is day 53. I don't know how I just now discovered, but I don't believe I have found a pin with this journal all the way back there. I don't know how I've been writing any of this. Even if I am writing this. I think I am losing it. Whatever it is. I shall try to continue writing this journal. Day 102. I began to hear footsteps behind me. I believe something is tracking me. I don't know how long I can keep ahead of it. I grow tired. I still don't think I've slept. Barely eaten. All I know is that either hopefully this thing will bring me sweet death, or that it's my friends come to rescue me. I will try to continue writing for- <laughs>